Okay, true crime friends, it's about that time again. It is lunchtime true crime. Listen, I have thought long and hard, long and hard about whether or not I would cover this story. And ultimately, I've decided I'm going to go ahead and do it. Mostly because, well, you'll see when I get into the story. Okay, so this is um, a new podcast called Fitz Files. If you know anything about me and my thoughts and feelings about um, Will folks over there at Fitz News, it's a love-hate kind of situation. I have days where I'm like, ooh, Will, tell me more. Because he, he is so trashy and has all the gossip. And I am here for it. But then, it's like, sometimes he goes a little too far. But I know a little something about that life. Because I spend a lot of time going a little bit too far and get myself in trouble. So, on that level, I relate to Will. Also, something about him seems just scummy to me. I do not trust him. But I like some of his work. So, also, he used to be Mandy Matney's boss, and Mandy laughed, and they had a fight, and blah, blah, blah. Now he has a new lady who's over there. I don't know her name, but as far as I'm concerned, she's the discount Mandy Matney, because she is no Mandy, but she reminds me a lot of Mandy. Anyway, so the Fitz Files, which is supposed to be our new home for, like, true crime and breaking news and whatever, I doubt that it's going to be all that. But this story that they're covering right now has kind of got my attention, mostly because there are some wacky characters in it. Now, listen, be advised, there is some possibly not safe for work content, but I'm going to make it all nice and safe for work so you don't have to worry and you won't have to explain things to your children. If you're at home having lunch and your kids are like, mommy, what exactly does that mean? I'm going to give you, I'm going to make it nice and clean and easy so your grandma can even listen to the podcast. But also... Depends on who your grandma is, because I can say filthy things, and my grandmother would be like, girl, yeah, hilarious. Let me tell you one. So, you know, depends on your grandma. Anyway, you know me. I don't remember nobody's name. By the time we get to the end of the story, I will know everybody's name. But for right now, I'm just going to give you the broad strokes from episode one of The Fitz Files. Okay, this is the Rosebud murder case. There should be some theme music here. Like and subscribe if you not have if you have not already. Okay, so look, this woman, Christina, was working down at the animal hospital. Everybody loved her. Everybody thought she was great and it was all wonderful. And then um, they couldn't find her one day. They're like, Christina is never late for work. Where is Christina? Can somebody go check on Christina? So they call her fiance, this old dude that she was dealing with. And they were like, hey, old dude, listen, can you go see what's up with Christina? So he goes into her house and he finds her very unalive, very on the floor, posed in some like weird fashion, whatever, with rose petals all around her. And he's like, oh, this is terrible. Hello, 911. Um, my fiance is very unalive laying on the floor and it's a bunch of rose petals around her. So they were like, okay, we'll be right there. And then he hung up on 911. And then he starts making other phone calls. Well, this is South Carolina, Greenville. So they're like, oh, this is an emergency. So the police and everybody goes over there like right away. This sucker is on the phone. The cops roll up and they're like, sir, he's like, can, can you hold on for a minute? Because I'm, I'm still on the phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want extra cheese. If, I mean, I don't know what the phone call was about. He made the police wait while he finished your phone call. Where does he get the... I guess he figured they're not going to be able to help her. I seen her already. She like a carp over there on the floor. Listen... I can finish my phone call. So the, she, he was like, yes, can I help you? And they were like, you called because there was somebody who was no longer on this side of glory there in the floor. And um, he was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, my fiance, she's she's no longer among the land of living. And they were like, okay, um, so you want to point us in the right direction? Show us where and she, he was like, of course, I'll show you. And he starts putting on gloves. But, but why are you putting on gloves? You, do you know, are you trying to, what, what's happening? So they were like, sir, why are you putting on gloves? He's like, no reason, follow me. So in his gloves, he goes into the house and points out his unalive fiance on the floor. And he's not like, oh my goodness, I'm hysterical or whatever. He was like, there she is. So of course the cops were like, okay, mm he's a suspicious character. So He's back outside continuing to make phone calls and the cops are looking around, right? And they're like, okay, so there's this person who's on the floor. There's rose petals around her. Maybe it was a robbery, but wait, there are electronics. There's cash just laid all out there. Cash, electronics, her cell phone, her purse, all of her identification and white powder. Okay, were they diapering a baby? Why was there white? Okay, that kind of way. Okay, great, 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 great. All of that was left. 
And I'm thinking if this is a robbery, these are the first things you would take. Also, why that dude still have his gloves off? So the cops are like, hey, listen, uh, thanks for showing us in. You can take your gloves off if you like. We have questions. So first of all, what's her name? And he was like, do I need an attorney? And they were like, mm, say again, sir. And he was just like, yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to call my attorney. I think I should get an attorney. And they were like, no, you don't need an attorney. Why don't you come on down? to the police station. We're going to make you nice and comfortable. We have some lovely donuts down there and a yummy, yummy scrumptious cup of coffee. You know, we have sweet and low sugar and Splenda. You're really going to enjoy it. Come on, come on, come on. Just sit here in the back seat. We're, gonna, we're not going to put you in a nice bracelet or nothing, but we're just going to sit you. We're going to make you nice and comfortable, put the little seatbelt on you, and then um, we're going to take you to our place and have a little chat. And he was like, okay. So he goes and he's sitting there and he's like, I think I should get a lawyer, sir. They have just asked you your name. They have not even read you your right. Like, what is happening? So the cops are investigating the scene. They're also investigating this, this like, weird, sketchy character. And he gives them some information. And they're like, okay, everything about this is weird. And so they notify her employer, her family, whatever. The family is like, she has a child. Oh, her beloved child is missing. Where is her child? Oh, my goodness. Oh, me. Oh, my. Whatever, whatever. So, um couple days later, the cops go and make a news, uh, like a, a press conference, and they announce an arrest. Now, I'm listening to this, and I'm thinking, well, obviously, it was that fiancé with the gloves. No, he has an airtight alibi. He's just weird. And so they were like, okay, um, so there were no cameras at that house, but we went around to all the neighbors and looked at all their ring cameras, and on the ring camera, they see a truck drive up with a bicycle in the back of it. The truck pulls up, goes in the back door, because everybody knows that she keeps her back door unlocked. Why everybody know you got your back door unlocked? You don't leave your back door unlocked. That's your business, but everybody has to know. Everybody? Why everybody? Okay, whatever. So he goes in the back door and steps over the nice white powder where he was not changing a baby's diaper and the electronics and the cash and the whatever and um, viciously, violently unalives this lady and then sprinkles rose petals around her and then poses her remains in a festive position. I don't know. Was she like, ole, ha ha, I don't know how they posed her, but um. It was like some sort of ritualistic situation. And then they see the person on the bicycle right away. Now they get all this from Ring Camera. Ring is out here solving crimes. I don't know what, you, listen, Ring's advertisement ought to be, you can see who's at the front door. Also, you're gonna solve all, solve all the crimes in your neighborhood. I should give me like two or three Ring Cams. I know a lot of my neighbors have them, but I'm like, mm, these squirrels might be out here up to something and I could see it in the middle of the night. So anyway, the ring camera solved the crime and the, the police have a news conference and they're like, okay, we've arrested this random dude that we didn't think had anything to do with it. Also, we've arrested her fiance. And everybody was like, but wait, I thought the fiance had an airtight situation going on. Like you don't have no proof. They were like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have any proof he had anything to do with this. But um, there are many other crimes that he's involved with. And it was like, right, that's why the gloves. And that's why the like, should I get a lawyer? Because he knew he was a criminal. And they were like, and also due to our further investigation, um, there was a lot of flash drives in the house. And those flash drives included inappropriate information, um, of photographs of people under 18, including the daughter of the decedent and some of the daughter's friends and the mother who is now unalive. Um, there was inappropriate pictures of her with young people and her fiance. He's a very old, like 60 something, which in the grand scheme of things is not that old. But if you think about him next to a minor, gross. Also, he should go underneath the jail because gross. So it's like, Oh, so he's a Pedialyte and the mama was a Pedialyte too, but now she's an unalive Pedialyte. It's a whole situation. And then the dude was also arrested for buggery, which has nothing to do with bugs. I know that's what I thought it was. I was like, what are you doing to a bug? And bugs are small. What you, what, mm, that's gross. Is it like, is there raid involved? I don't know. But turns out Miss Christina, who worked over at the animal hospital, was likely doing inappropriate things to the puppies and the kitties. I don't even want to go into it because your children might be watching. This. So I'm like, okay, everybody in this story is weird and gross. Also, the dude that they arrested, they arrested him 
after he turned himself in. He just was like, oh, you need me? Oh yeah, I did that. And he jumped in his car, drove across country. He's like a world-class pianist, also a world-class weirdo. And now, the two are not mutually exclusive, right? You could be a weirdo and not be an unaliver. You could be an unaliver. Well, I think that automatically makes you a weirdo though. But anyway, this dude, in addition to being a world-class pianist, was like learning all of the Beethoven sonatas or something. A lot of fancy music. And the shade of Will Folks, as they told this man's story, they used his piano playing music as the background. Oh, that is shady AF. Like... Mm hmm he's a terrible person, but please enjoy some of his musical stylings. So as you hear him like dramatically playing the piano, they're talking about him and they're saying like, he was an avid um, Dragons and Dungeons player or whatever. He was super into cosplay. In his free time, he took wood and made swords out of them so that he could like reenact all these epic battles in the woods behind him house, behind his house. And then he wanted military training so that he could accurately reenact the fantasy battles. Sir, I'm going to need you to get a hobby that's not piano playing, possibly a girlfriend, and I'm sure a personality because something tells me you're not that interesting. Or maybe you're too interesting. He might be the most interesting man in the world. He was in the military. He got bounced out of the military. And then he was like, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to learn all 32 of Beethoven's sonatas from memory. And I'm just going to go around the country playing them perfectly. Can you say OCD? I think he had OCD and no shade to people who have OCD because that can really work in your life. I need a little OCD in certain areas of my life and probably less in others. But this dude, like, mm, okay, playing the piano, unaliving, ritually, like arranging people. I don't, I don't, where'd you get the flowers from? Did she already have the flowers? Did he know about the puppies and the kitties? Was he just like, a member of PETA, and he was very upset about the things he heard, child, I don't know. And also, because all of that was not enough, the decedent, the lady who was dead like a carp on the floor, was being sued by her own child for including her in the Pedialyte activity. It's too much. It's too much. This was only episode one, and I was like, well, what will be next? So far, I think they've dropped you three or four episodes of The Fitz Files, all of it is too much. All of it is ridiculous. I do not want to support Will, folks, yet I do enjoy a little tea. So if Mr. Will continues to drop that ha-ha tea, then I will have no choice but to cover his folder, his, his, his files, the Fitz files. I will do it under duress. And every time I post a video that includes Will, folks, I will say, I do not like him. Do not download his podcast. Do not listen to his whatever he's doing. But, um... Tell me more, Will. Can you just whisper it into my ear? Just whisper right here and I will tell the people and then we, we ask, can still act like I don't know you? Because I'm like that, right? I reserve the right to change my mind. I could think you're terrible, but if I you giving me the high, high tea, well, child, I mean, what am I supposed to do? I am a professional gossip and professional gossips have to get their information from somewhere. So I'm only just doing my best. I'm just out here doing the best I could do to keep my whole situation alive by informing the general public and some very close friends on YouTube about what is going on out here in these true crime streets. Okay, it's been 15 minutes or something. You need to wrap up your lunch. You know, you know it don't take you 15 minutes to eat that burger. You know you're just scarfing it down and having a little kiki and look. Are you drinking some wine on your lunch hour? Don't drink wine. Your boss can smell it on you. You can have that after work. But if you put it in like a smoothie or something, maybe nobody will notice the difference, child. I don't know. It's Amos Friday. Wait, by the time you see this, it will be Friday. I'm actually filming it on Thursday. That's my little secret. But um, by the time you see this tomorrow, have yourself like a sparkling lemonade or something. And if it sparkles with seltzer or if it sparkles with champagne, whatever, just make it sparkle just like you. You have a great weekend and I will see you soon. Bye.